Okay, so say I give my friend Jeff Sauer 20 bucks to post about his SEMrush GA4 course on LinkedIn. Later, I wanna figure out how many people actually took the course from that one link. How do I do it? That page gets traffic from many different sources. How do I know what Jeff's link did specifically? This is where UTMs come in really handy. In this video, I will demystify that long string of letters and words at the end of many of the links that you see online. No, it's not my cat walking across the keyboard. We will build a link with UTM parameters step-by-step step, and then dive into Google Analytics to see exactly how UTM parameters give you incredible insight into the performance of your marketing efforts. Oh, and in the end, I will share my top three mistakes to avoid when you're building UTMs. Let's go. So what are UTMs? Let's start from the very beginning. Back in the day, Google Analytics began as a tool called Urchin, developed by a small company named Urchin Software Corporation. It started with a few friends who saw a big opportunity when they realized companies were spending millions on ads, but actually had no idea how those ads were performing. After 9-11, when companies started tightening their budgets, there was a huge shift towards needing real, measurable results from marketing efforts. So in 2005, Google snapped up Urchin, transforming it into the Google Analytics we know today. Google Analytics became essential, offering a free tool that allowed businesses to track and optimize online marketing efforts effectively. This shift made data-driven decisions accessible to almost anyone, which was a big deal and in many ways shaped the internet to what it is today. So what exactly are UTMs? UTM stands for Urchin Tracking Module, named after the original tool that Google acquired. UTM are little snippets of text added to a URL that help you track the performance of your campaigns by providing specific information about the traffic sources. They're incredibly powerful because they help you see which campaigns or efforts are driving traffic and how effective your marketing efforts are. Essentially, UTMs help you understand where people are coming from and what they do on your website once they're there. UTMs can be incredibly useful for tracking various types of campaigns, including social media posts, email campaigns, and even individual keywords from paid search ads. And by the way, I have a powerful tip coming up at the end for how to use UTMs to uncover hidden audience insights that can take your campaigns to the next level. Let's take a real world example. At SEMrush, we specialize in online marketing. So why not take a look under the hood to see one of our own campaigns for SEMrush Academy, specifically our course on Google Analytics. Yes, it's a video about UTM links in Google Analytics using examples from our very own course on Google Analytics very meta. All right, let's take a look at how we added UTMs to our links so we can track which online content is driving the most traffic and subscriptions. Let's say I'm going to be sharing a link to this SEMrush Academy GA course through my LinkedIn profile. SEMrush wants to track how much traffic and conversions came from this one specific link. The best way to do this is to build a UTM link. The UTM link consists of five main components, source, medium, campaign, term, and content. Let's go through each of these while we build a link using the free Google campaign URL builder. I added a link. Oh. I added a link to below. I added a link to it below this video. I'm sorry. Link below. I'm just gonna say that. I added a link below, so check it out. The first thing we want to do here is add the URL of the page we're linking to. In this case, Jeff Sauer's GA4 course in SEMrush Academy. Now let's look at the required fields first, starting with source. Source refers to the specific place that referred user traffic. For example, if users land on your website after a Google search, then the source would be Google. If they land on your website after a newsletter, then the source might be email. If the user lands on your website after directly entering a URL, then the source would be direct. In our case, we're posting on LinkedIn, so that's the source. Medium refers to the type of referral, for example, if a user lands on your website after a Google search, the medium would be organic. Now, if they land on your website after clicking on a paid search ad, the medium would be CPC or cost per click. In this case, our medium is social because we're posting on LinkedIn. Campaign is, well, the name of our campaign. Let's call it GA4 underscore course. 
This campaign name will be used not only for my LinkedIn post, but for all other channels that are part of the campaign that is promoting this course, like our email newsletter, Instagram posts, etc., etc. Now, all links that are part of a campaign should contain the same campaign parameter. And when I say the same, I mean the exact same one. So in this case, it's all lowercase, one word, no spaces. This is really important and we'll get into why in just a moment. Okay, back to our URL builder. Notice that there are optional fields here for campaign ID, term, and content, which are mostly used for paid campaigns. In paid search campaigns, the UTM term is usually the keyword. For other ad platforms, it is often used for identifying the audience or the level below the campaign. For example, the ad set in Facebook. UTM content is also usually used for paid traffic only. It usually describes the ad creative like yellow banner or red banner or even the name of the headline. Now, my LinkedIn post is not paid, it's organic, but I can still use these UTM parameters to gather additional information that could be useful later when I'm looking at performance in GA4. So for example, since I want to know how much traffic came from my specific post, I'm going to add my name to the campaign term field, Rita Cedric. That way, later in Google Analytics, I can zero in on the performance of this one particular link. So this form is now filled. So I'm gonna hit enter and here is my link, voila. By the way, LinkedIn will automatically shorten any URL you post, but if you're sharing this link elsewhere, you might wanna use a URL shortener like Bitly. Okay, so we built a link with UTM parameters, posted it on LinkedIn, now what? This is where the real value of Google Analytics and UTM parameters come in. Because I added UTM parameters to the link, in Google Analytics, I can now see not only how much traffic it brought in, but more importantly, how that traffic actually performed. So to see this data at the UTM campaign level, I'm gonna go into GA4 and click on either the user acquisition or the traffic acquisition reports. Now I'm gonna select traffic acquisition and choose the parameter that I'm interested in, which in this case is session campaign. Then, because I'm looking to filter for this one specific campaign, I'm gonna filter for campaigns that start with GA4. And voila. But not just that, because I added UTMs to my link, I can see how many people completed events, the average amount of time they spent on the page, whether they bounced or not, et cetera, et cetera. UTMs, those little snippets, allow you to look at this behavior filtered by any of the UTM parameters you select. You can see it for a whole campaign, you can see it for a landing page, a source, medium, or UTM term. It is magical. Okay, so now that you know how to build UTMs and understand how they impact the data that you can see in GA4, let's discuss three key mistakes that you should avoid when you are building and using UTMs. First, inconsistent naming conventions. It is essential to maintain consistent naming conventions for your UTM parameters, especially when it comes to capitalization. For example, if you use Instagram with a capital I in one link and Instagram with a lowercase i in another, the data will be split in your analytics. You'll have two separate sources, even though they're really just one. So always stick to a standard format, like all lowercase, to make sure that your results are easy to read and consistent. Second, using unnecessary parameters. While UTMs are powerful, you don't need to use all five parameters for every campaign. You can skip parameters that aren't relevant. For example, if you are never going to check out the performance of traffic that came from a blue ad versus a yellow ad, there is no point in adding that information to the UTM content parameter. And finally, number three, not using UTMs consistently. To get a complete picture of your campaign performance, it's essential to use UTMs consistently across all your links. For example, if we're promoting the SEMrush Academy GA4 course on Instagram and LinkedIn, I would make sure that each link includes the appropriate UTM parameters so that we can track the performance of each platform accurately. Avoiding these common mistakes will help ensure that your UTM tracking is accurate and provides valuable insights for optimizing your marketing efforts. Okay, so that is all the stuff you have to know about UTMs. And finally, after spending so much time on this link, I would invite you to click on it. 
With GA4, a lot has changed. So check out our GA4 for SEO course with SEMrush Academy. It will guide you through the latest strategies and tools to enhance your marketing analytics. Remember, using UTMs effectively can give you valuable insights into your audience's behavior. So go ahead and start implementing them in your links now. Hasta pronto.